Hi folks and welcome to another Saturday morning Semo Flange. I'm Matt and we're going to talk about another top five movies. This time from Mel Gibson. Yeah, I don't care what you think about Mel Gibson now, but um, he's a good actor. He's a good. I've always enjoyed Mel Gibson. Yeah, he's kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I'll agree with that, but still doesn't. I still can't deny that he is just a fun actor to watch. And there's a lot of good movies with him. In fact, funny enough, this is a hard list to make for me. There's a lot of great movies with Mel Gibson that I absolutely adore. I have a ton, a ton of honorable mentions here. Um, first off, We Were Soldiers. You may have forgotten this military <clears throat> movie back in the day, but it's a solid film with Mel Gibson in it. Uh, just really good. I'm going to have to rush through a lot of these because I have so many of them. Uh, Edge of Darkness is just phenomenal. It's one of those revenge secrets. I mean, he he is what Liam Neeson is now, right? The whole get revenge and stuff. There's a lot of get revenge movies I have here. Um, you have Payback, which is another one. Just, just great. Just great. Um, get the Gringo is another one. I think that one got a little bit of traction when it came out. It, it's a pretty good one. Ransom is great, too. <clears throat> I think they take his family and hold him for ransom, but he's not going to go go for that. Um, so a lot of those, and then another one, it's not really a, it is kind of shoot 'em up, kind of, kind of, kind of dark and gritty, but I really enjoy it. It's not a revenge movie though, but it's called Dragged, Dragged Across Concrete. Um, this movie got no fanfare, but I think it kind of made it on the streaming market for a little while, but it has Vince Vaughn in it too. And they're playing cops who get let go, uh, um, because they're not being as sensitive or whatever, and they have to solve crime. It's actually really good. Really solid film. So, any of those movies you should go, you should check out and see. Kind of all have the same theme there, a little bit dark and gritty, but they're really good. Um, there's some movies that just do not make my top five, but really probably should have. Uh, the Beaver. <laughs> this is weird. Jodie Foster directed this. This is his comeback movie after all the debacle, the drunken ra rants and raves about Jews. He, uh, Jody Foster, and there's a lot of people in Hollywood, Hollywood who are friends with Mel Gibson, because Mel supposedly is a really nice guy. I mean, when he's not drinking and <laughs> calling out Jews. Okay, he's a really nice guy supposedly, and he's helped a lot of people out in Hollywood before, and so everyone wanted to give him that second shot. A lot of people did, except for Ricky Gervais, which I think is funny that he kind of constantly mocks Mel Gibson. But uh, Mel, Mel Gibson got his start back. Jodie Foster gave him a starring role in something called The Beaver. Kind of kind of went under the radar. A lot of people knew that Mel Gibson was coming back, but no one cared anymore now. They all hated him. I saw it when it came out in DVD. It's about a man who... And it kind of reflects on Mel Gibson's current uh, dilemma. He, he can't, he's made a lot of mistakes in his life. Now he can't, he can't talk to anyone. He doesn't know how to talk to people. He's kind of awkward. He's kind of damaged from this experience. And he finds this beaver puppet, this puppet of a beaver in the trash can. He puts it on his hand and he starts talking on it. Well, now he can, it's kind of how he can get his feelings out is talk through the puppet. So he talks through the puppet to his family and his friends. Everyone thinks he's kind of weird. And he is kind of psychologically broken. But I think Jodie Foster's in this too. I think someone is a psychiatrist trying to help him out and trying to work through his uh, uh, dilemma. It's actually a really solid film. If you did not watch this for whatever reason, Go and check it out. I don't know if it's on streaming, but uh, The Beaver. Really good. Um, there's another one, an oldie, but a really goodie, uh, Man Without a Face. I also have that. I have too many. I need to start running through these or I'm going to be here on... <clears throat> I'm, I'm, if I talk about all these, um, uh, I'm going to uh, be here for two hours. But anyway, Man Without a Face is a really good one too. Check that one out. That was one of his older movies. I almost made my top five. I, I just I just haven't seen it in so long that um, I, I need to see it again. And who knows? Maybe if I saw it again, it'd be on my list. Another one that I thought about putting on the list, I actually really did. People are going to roll their eyes, but What Women Want. Um, it's the funny one where uh, he can actually start reading women's minds. And, of course, you know he knows when the woman wants him or when what women really think. Sometimes they think disgusting things. Sometimes they think sexy things. Sometimes they think stupid things. And... There's one. There's one person in his office who doesn't think anything because she's an airhead. She didn't. She, nothing's going through her mind, 
And like he's trying to get away from quiet, but he he enjoys her company because she doesn't have any thoughts in her mind. She's kind of dumb. I think that's hilarious. Now, kind of male chauvinist now mo- movie now. This movie would never be made these days. But it's a pretty funny film. So and you couldn't do it. The you couldn't flip this because you know the one thing guys are always thinking. But uh, what women want is what he does, and so he knows how to woo this woman. He gives her everything she wants. He, what he thinks she wants before and isn't the case. Then later on, he loses their thoughts, and now he has to be understanding without un, you know reading people's minds. It's really interesting. It's kind of a comedy, but it's a really interesting comedy with heart. It's really good. Uh, what women want, not in my top five, but. <clears throat> Again, if I was to do a top 10, it'd probably be in my top 10. I mean, hold on, hold on. Let's see if I can do this again. Let me see. I said Beaver is 10, Man Without a Face, 9. What Women Want, 8. No, nah, I would have had to put another one. I'll put Drag to Cost Concrete. Shoot, I would put that number 8 and move this up to number 7, What Women Want. I think Drag to Cost Concrete is really good. So there you go. Number 10, The Beaver. Number 9, Man Without a Face. Number 8, uh, drag across concrete and number seven what women want I need to start doing that with these that I have like multiple I mean I had I have a ton of these movies of Mel Gibson's that I want to talk about so maybe 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 this does well no the podcast is a top five but here you go uh, top six and my number six would have been honorable mention The Patriot I really love The Patriot it's one of those three hour films epic films he was doing these back in the day and it was. It came out Fourth of July. I remember a billion people went to go see this. I did not go see it in theaters on Fourth of July because I think I went somewhere. That was the one. I hate Fourth of July as a holiday. Honestly, it's my least favorite holiday. My least favorite. I have zero fun on it. There's only one time. I think this may have been the one time because I, I would have gone to a movie on Fourth of July because I mean everyone went. I mean all my friends went, but I went to a different party. That night, I had to have because I don't go out in Fourth of July. I don't go. I don't want to see the fireworks. I don't care. I, I, I just don't like the holiday, and uh, it's boring to me. And uh, so anyway, um, the one I did, I went to this, and they're the rich people in town. They're the people who created one of the first Coca-Cola bottling plants in the South. The one of the first ones. And so they make tons of money. They still run Coca-Cola, the bottling plant there for Coca-Cola. They're super duper rich. So I got to hang out. It's not really a mansion. It's a big house, but it wasn't a mansion that they live in. But it was really nice, and they had that thing decked out. I mean, the, the American flag and pennants and banners and everything, you know, sparklers going off, they had it decked out, you know, red, white, and blue. Very patriotic. But it felt really, it was it was classy patriotic, if that makes sense. Everything was really classy. And I was like, oh, this is really nice. And, of course, they had unlimited Cokes everywhere (laughs) any coke product you wanted was there and again that was really nice too because i enjoy my cola so i could pick up a coke most people have beers which i don't don't, i don't drink alcohol i don't think anything's wrong with it i just don't drink it and i never got a taste for it but anyway uh it had a bunch of cokes is what they had there's like this is awesome and they had a big smorgasbord of food now i i still know this family they're still really super nice i remember uh <clears throat> I ran into one of them not too long ago, and I, 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 I told her I, said, I don't know if you remember me, Aaron. I'm a. I, I, we used to hang. We hung out a long time ago, and she remembered who I was. She, oh, absolutely. You're you're so well. Hey, and any time you want to come by, you just let us know. I mean, they're really nice. They're really a nice for people who are super rich. They're really nice people, and uh, they because they do big tailgating at LSU, and uh, they have a smorgasbord of food there. They invite certain guests. You, if you get invited on one of their LSU trips, you are, ooh. And I remember one of my buddies was there because he's friends with them. And I, 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 I wasn't invited, but I was there at the game, and I saw him you know, at the uh, at the Beedenhorn setup. And I was like, shut up. And then, so I went in there. I was like, dude, what's going on? I punched him. He was in line. I said, give me, some, give me a plate of food. I want a plate of food. Come on, give me some food. You know, I'm just a mooch or whatever. Well, he was laughing. He said, well, you go ask Aaron. You know Aaron. I was like, oh, no, dude, I haven't talked to her in years. And that's when I spoke to her, and she was like, oh, please stay. Please stay. Get a plate. We want you to be here. I was like, no, I can't. But that was just really nice, though. It's like, oh, hey, more people? Yeah, come on, we got plenty of food. They're super nice people. 
Um, but I got to hang out at her house and everything. It was really nice. They had a little guest house too that was open and no one was there, but me and one of my buddies hung out there, kind of talked, joked around. And I mean, I just really had an overall good time. The only time I've ever, I can ever recall having a good time during 4th of July. But that, I think that may have been the same year that this movie came out. I, it's probably pretty close. Um, but that that's the only reason I probably wouldn't have gone out to see this movie because I would have in any other case. But I remember, I mean, everyone went. It was a huge group of, I mean, 20, 30 people. I'm not even playing. I'm, it was that many of my friends were going. Like Everyone I ever knew was going to go see Patriot. And uh, it was funny because the kid, one of the kids in the Patriot looked just like my little brother back in the day, just like him with different colored hair. <clears throat> and so everyone made a joke that my brother Jordan was in it. I watched it the next weekend, absolutely enjoyed it, loved it, it was really good. I like the whole joke about he's trying to build a rocking chair, he can't get it done. He he's, he just wants to build a rocking chair and he's like checking out other people's rocking chairs <laughs> in their houses and stuff before everything goes down. It's a really great movie. Yeah, it's one of those two and a half hour slogs, but it's it's really awesome. It's really good. Um, the Patriot, really awesome film. Didn't make my top five because I have five really awesome ones. Now, of these five, one, two, three. I don't know if people would choose these all, all of these. Um, I really had a hard time deciding. My number one and number two were pretty easy. But three, four, and five, as I look at my notes here, I have each one of these took the place of three, four, and five. Like I could not, and, and still looking at them, I want to make some last minute changes again. But I'm going to keep with what I've written right now. But have let this be known. The next three I'm mentioning is a, probably a three-way tie. Okay? On any given day, I could switch these up again. But these three are definitely in my top five. I just don't know what order to put them in. This doesn't really happen that much when I'm doing top fives. So very rarely do I have a hard choice of what can be in this. But it's a three-way tie here for four or five and uh, three, four, and five. So let's get this done. My number five, as I wrote it down here, is M. Night Shyamalan Signs. And I told you, I think it was last week, I talked about M. Night Shyamalan movies, and I told you I really enjoyed them. I really enjoy a lot of his movies, some that people hate. Um, I, the Village, you know, I really enjoy The Village. I've watched it more than once. I still enjoy that movie. I think it's so good, and people hated that movie. Um, Lady in the Water, absolutely hated. <laughs> That's the one movie I actually hate. Uh, Devil, where they're in the elevator, and the devil's there with them. It's really good. It's a really good film. M. Night Shyamalan does, is not always a big hit every time he comes out, but there's a lot of movies. Oh, I can't remember the, what was the movie Home with the parent, the grand, the creepy looking grandparents that do weird things that run around naked and stuff at night and chase the kids or whatever. That's really creepy. An old woman walking around naked chasing you down a hallway. Yeah, I'd run too. Um, but there's a lot of good M. Night Shyamalan movies. I really like in any movie that comes out with, with, him, with his name on it. I'm interested. It may not be a good movie, but I'm interested in seeing it. Uh, and Science is a solid film. I, I know a lot of people made fun of this film because at the end, the aliens leave because water is their weakness. And you're like, well, why would you go after a planet that's mostly water? You know, if water's your weakness. And water's something, uh, you know, it's not a rare commodity. We all can fight them off with water. You know, but it doesn't matter. The point was, it's not based on the alien invasion. It's based around the family, this broken family that's having to come together and deal with this crisis. Even though their dad, who was a pastor, has kind of lost the faith because his wife died and he hates God for it. It's really awesome. Uh, my favorite scene is when they ask him to do the prayer, but he doesn't want to pray for the food. And they offer to pray. He's like, no, we're not blessing me anything anymore. We're not but and they they make this they make this huge banquet of all their favorite foods because, you know, the alien invasion is going to happen. It seems like they're all going to die. So why not just have one big, you know, fest, feast? And they, you know, she wants cheeseburgers. They're making cheeseburgers. He wants mac and cheese. He's making mac and cheese for this kid. They're, he wants steak. They're making steaks. They're making everything. This should be a bountiful feast. But because they didn't bless it, they're all crying. They're all because he's kind of ruined the mood, his lack of faith. They all find disturbing <laughs> to go with Star Wars, but I think it's just so awesome because they they're not enjoying this meal. They're not enjoying this meal. They believe in their father. Their their father believes in God. He leads the family, and even though he's lost, now that he's lost his faith, 
they can't enjoy the best meal ever. It's so symbolic. It's so symbolic. You can't tell me M. Night Shyamalan didn't didn't see that, have that written down. Um, but it's just so it's a solid performance. I think Joaquin Phoenix is in this too. If I remember, I think that's his oldest son. That's kind of weird to think, right? Um, but it, it's wonderful performances all around. But honestly, one of Mel Gibson's best performances ever of playing a broken man. It's just great. It's just great. I absolutely love it. So, Signs, my number five. All right. Number four is a series that's very popular. Everyone loves it. And no, it's not Mad Max. I just realized I haven't talked about Mad Max here. Mad Max did not make, folks, it's not going to make my top five. Let me mention this. I meant to, I don't have this written down here. I meant to talk about this because I know a few people are going to put Mad Max in their top five. You're probably just thinking I was going to talk about Mad Max. I'm not. Um, I enjoy Mad Max, Fury Road, the second one, and uh, what's the other one called? Uh, uh, the Thunderdome or something, Beneath the Thunderdome or whatever. To be honest, I love three the best. <laughs> now, the remake, if it is a remake, is awesome. Awesome. That is the, uh, if, if Mel Gibson was in that movie, that movie would be my number one movie by far. That new Mad Max movie was excellent. I don't know why they never made any more of those movies. I guess the director didn't want to do anything else after that. But that movie is great. I actually need to watch that movie again now that I'm thinking about it. Um, but I went. I, I watched that first. I don't remember. I didn't remember any of the Mad Max movies. I watched them, you know, when I was younger, but I don't remember them. And I didn't want to see this movie, the new movie Mad Max. But uh, someone made me go see it in the theaters. And then as I watch it, he got called away and he had to leave. So he didn't even watch it with me. Um, but I watched the entire film, thought it was great. It was a great movie and just lovely. Um, I, I think I watched it again in theaters. That's kind of rare. Did I do that? It may, this may have been something I watched twice in theaters because I went back with my brother uh, to see it. I think so. But it's just a, it was a great movie. I still love it. Uh, movie, uh, probably should have watched it at the beach this past year. My brother and I were thinking about a movie to watch this year. Mad Max is the movie to watch, man. It's just such a fantastic film. Um, it's basically just drive out in the desert, then turn around and drive back. That's basically the whole plot of the film. But uh, the first three movies are actually really good Mad Max movies. Um, I love the Thunderdome. I love it. I think it's one of the best ones of the three, which a lot of people hated that one. Um, but it, they're not. It wasn't going to make my top five. It would be an honorable mention. It may, it wouldn't even make my top ten. Those movies didn't age well for me. I mean, they're okay. They're okay movies, but they're not the best movies, especially not from Mel Gibson, who made tons of great movies, in my opinion. So I'm sorry, Mad Max fans. If Mad Max is in your top five, that's totally cool. I get it. I get it. But not me. What was the uh, movie series I'm talking about was the only franchise series I think he's been a part of, which is Lethal Weapon. <clears throat> Lethal Weapon, uh, when I watched it, I think Lethal Weapon 4 had just come out, and I was going to watch them all. I think that's all they've had. Um, the Lethal Weapon movies are really good. They're really good. Um, 1 through 4, is, they're just so much fun. I would probably watch these movies again. It's been years since I've watched them. But, you know, Joe Pesci, I think, came in for uh, three. Guys, guys, guys! He's just great. He's in 4-2. 4 is just excellent. It's funny because Morgan Freeman, and no, not Morgan, Dan, Dan, uh, Danny Glover, in the very first movie, he's talking about, I'm too old for this, you know. Well, dude, by <laughs> movie 4, you're way too old for this, you know. He keeps talking about, I'm too old for this, I'm too old for this. Um, I kind of would like to see them come back for a fifth one in a way. Why hasn't this franchise been lifted up? Oh, that's right. Hollywood still hasn't forgiven Mel Gibson. That's why. But the Lethal Weapon movies are a lot of fun. They're just fun movies to watch, action movies. He's crazy. He's got a, what, a dislocated shoulder. He has to, you know, pop back into its socket. I get that because I also have that issue. Uh, a long time ago, my shoulder got dislocated, uh, but popped out of its socket. Um, what had happened was, uh, I was working out with Bruce at the time. Bruce was not paying attention, which is okay. I don't blame him for this, but what had happened was a fight had broken out in the gym. I don't know what had happened, but these two muscle guys had just gone at it and were just decking each other. And, um, so what happened, the fight broke out. Everyone was watching the fight. Well, then it spilled over to me on the bench press 
and they hit me. They hit the bench press, me, me hitting the bench. Well, I, well, I think someone grabbed my uh, the bar that I was pushing up because I was bench pressing, and he pulled the weight down. Well, then I lost control. That thing slammed down. I have one arm holding all the weight. My spotter, Bruce, was not, you know, he was distracted by the fight, and all that weight on one arm just popped it out of its socket. And, I mean, I screamed. I was in pain. No one was caring about me, though. <laughs> I mean, I rolled out of that uh, gym. I was in so much pain, uh, crying out and everything. I was really hurt. I was like, oh, oh. And I didn't know what had happened. I just know that something had happened to my shoulder. I remember I went to the doctor. And he like popped it back in. And it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad. And uh, he said, you know what? He said, it's probably going to pop in and out. Because it popped out uh, when, I, when I, I used to sleep with my hands up in the air, up above me. I can't sleep like that anymore. Well, I probably could now, but I couldn't back in anymore because my uh, shoulder, it would slip. It would just pop kind of out of socket. And I'd realize that in the middle of the night. And when it's nothing more terrifying to know that you've got to pop that shoulder back in. I'm going, oh, no. Now, I didn't have to go slam it up against the wall. But, you know, I'd have to move it around and you hear, you know, just a sick little wet pop. And it goes back in and it hurt. It would hurt so bad. And I'd roll. I mean, for years, this would happen to me. If I slept with my arm up, which I sometimes did above my head, I'd curse myself in the middle of the night because I'd wake up and I knew it, it had slipped out of the socket. And I was like, oh, no. And then pop or whatever it was. And it did hurt so bad. So every time it happened in Lethal Weapon, I felt that guy's pain. I felt Mel Gibson's character's pain. Because it hurt me so bad. It hurt me so bad. Um, the reason I say it hasn't happened lately, and it hasn't happened in the past couple of years, because a few years ago, it started, as I'm getting older, it started having really bad problems. Like whenever I'd uh, throw, um, throw the ball, it's, it happened on my left arm, which I'm left-handed. I couldn't throw as hard. I couldn't, I was, my arm was getting weak. My wife and I would throw the ball in the backyard, we throw, we play, we just throw the baseball in the backyard and talk. That's what we used to do back in the day before kids. And um, we, uh, when I when I threw the ball and everything and everything, I'd get really tired. My arms were hurting. We'd have to stop. And then I remember same thing. We went to a um, arcade and I went to play basketball. You know, a little basketball shot. And you go up against someone else. So we we're like, okay, let's go. And we we're trying to shoot basketball as much as we can. My arm just gave out. I, I couldn't even lift it. It, I was so, it was so sore. I was like, what is going on? And I started throwing with my right hand. I was like, what happened to my left arm? What's go-? And I realized, like, man, it's just weak. And so I went to go see a doctor. He said, well, it's just, you know, you're getting older. You popped your arm out of sock a long time ago, you said. So it's all that. I said, well, is there anything I can do about it? You know, he, he gave me a cortisone shot. My brother gets one every year now because for his knees, back, whatever, what shoulder, whatever's hurting him. Um, he gets cortisone shots all the time, but I, I was like, I don't want to be the dude that gets the cortisone shot. I don't. I said, what if I? I say, is there anything I can do? Can I work out? He said, well, anytime you build muscle around it, that'll help. You know, it may not solve your issue, but it'll help. I was like, great. So I started doing shoulder exercises. I mean, I was, I did it in the right way too. Made sure I did it proper. Didn't want to re hurt my shoulder, but uh, I did shoulder exercises to where uh, now I have a, I have a lot of upper body strength, but I still do shoulder exercises today. Uh, not as intense as I used to, to keep the muscle around it good. And to be honest, never had a problem since. Now, I don't think that's the cure for everyone because it doesn't make sense that muscle would do. But muscle makes it stronger, kind of thickens everything up in there. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I do know I have fallen asleep with my hand up in the air, panicked, but nothing happened. So it didn't slip out of socket. So, but thankfully I haven't had to take, I only took that one cortisone shot, never took another one again. Never had to take another one. So, Woo, fingers crossed. I mean, in a few more years, I'll probably be, you know, all, you know, in a in a, in a wheelchair probably. Uh, my body is so banged up. But uh, for that one, uh, my shoulder hurting, yeah. And so looking at Lethal Weapon back in the day, I, I could connect to that guy because an accident happened to me. And I didn't watch these movies till like the fourth one had already come out. But uh, and by then the accident already happened, so his shoulder hurt, and I was like, "Oh, I feel your pain." And whenever he'd crack it in, he'd go, "Oh," and then he'd go back to normal. You're thinking, "Wait a minute, I thought it hurt so bad." No, the pain goes away pretty quick after you pop it back in. There's a sharp. I don't know. I can't explain it, but there's a sharp pain. I would roll over on my side and just, and then eventually, I mean, just a few seconds later, go back to sleep because the pain would subside because it's back in, you know, your shoulders back in place. So because I could connect to that character, that's why I, I, I could I kind of like those movies. But the movies are actually a fun comedic romp. 
Okay, so number three, weird one here. I totally forgot about this movie, but as I kept thinking about it, I love it and I want to see it again. Forever Young. Forever Young, the uh, pilot is cry cryogenically frozen. It was supposed to only be for a year to test something out or a few months, but because of an accident, they lose, they misship him somewhere or whatever, and he's frozen for 50-something years. And he wakes up in today's time. He's It was the 40s when he fell asleep, and now it's the 90s. And uh, his girlfriend is all old now. And, uh, you know, and uh, I think he eventually, his age catches up with him later on where he gets old too. Seriously, this is a movie I really want to rewatch now. But as I saw the movie, I was like, oh yeah, Forever Young. I really love that movie. I really think it's awesome. And um, I, I just, and like he's, you know, trying to, he's a man out of time, you know, all these years taken away from him and stuff because of an error, a shipping error or a, you know, they just forgot about the project and forgot he was still in the crime. Still, still forgot he was cryogenically frozen. How does that happen? It's the movie. But the thing is, though, it's a really fun movie. It's a really enjoyable movie. I plan on watching it again sometime soon. Forever Young, my numero three. All right, number two is Maverick. Um, I love this Western. I love this Western romp. It's comedy. Uh, James Garner's in it. The late, great James Garner now. Uh, I did not realize that James Garner had played Maverick. Uh, no, I did. I did. I did know that. But I never watched the Maverick TV show with James Garner. I knew he was part of the TV show, but I never watched it. I knew he was in the movie, but he wasn't playing Maverick. Well, it turns out that Mel Gibson, at the end, spoilers, is Maverick's son. And so he is Maverick. It's almost like a movie from the TV series. It's really good, and it's a lot of fun wheeling, dealing, train robbery, gambling, all the stuff you want in your Western. In fact, there's a funny, funny, funny Danny Glover appearance in it where uh, Danny he takes off Danny Glover's mask and they look at each other like it's a lethal weapon joke. You know, they're like, what? No. And then they walk away. It's great. Absolutely love the movie. There's a ton of things to love about this movie. It's so much, it's so much fun. I remember my wife, my, my mom, my mom didn't want to watch it because she loved the TV show. And even though James Garner, she said, she said, well, baby, I said, Mom, you need to see this movie. It's great. She went, I can't. She went, because I know James Garner is in it, but James Garner is Maverick for me, Matt. She was like, I watch the TV show, so I can't get it out of my head. I'll be watching that going, uh-uh, Mel Gibson isn't Maverick. James Cameron's Maverick. And then I just go, I said, Mom, Mom, you, you, Mom trust me, you need to watch it. But she said, Matt, no, I don't want... She didn't want to see a remake of her favorite character, especially when her favorite character isn't playing Maverick. And then I just basically told her, I said, Mom, at the end, you find out that he is Maverick. I said, that Mel Gibson's his son. My mom goes, oh, really? And so then she watched the movie. But that's one of the big twists in it, you know? Um, and so my mom was very happy, and she actually ended up really enjoying the movie. Uh, but Maverick, uh, really great film. Love it. I love continuity. I love that they made that wink and actually had it connect to the TV series. That's kind of slick. And uh, you know, the Danny Glover uh, cameo is phenomenal. I don't. I know we did top five cameos on a Saturday morning Sam Flanch. I really hope. I really hope that I mentioned that Danny Glover cameo because I really enjoyed it. I know I mentioned what in the Army now, the Brendan Fraser cameo. Where he's talking about try out the frog. It's a cameo from Encino Man. Really good because Polly Shore's looking at him like you wait. So oh man. Anyway, I, I won't get into cameos right now. Let's focus, Matt. Focus. What is the number one Mel Gibson film? Come on, baby. You know it's got to be Braveheart. Now I, I wasn't enthralled with Braveheart. There's another movie that came out at the same time called Rob Roy, kind of the B version of of Braveheart. But I actually enjoy Rob Roy more, starring Liam Neeson. Um, loved Rob Roy, thought Braveheart was good, but not as good as everyone said it was. However, watching it again, yes, it's a solid film. He does a great job. It's a great movie. I absolutely love it. The the cowardness and betrayal of Robert the Bruce, who then takes up the flag later on after uh, William Wallace pa dies. It's historically based. I remember there's a book. It, it wasn't called Braveheart. It was something else. It came up before the movie. And I remember I, I worked at a book table at little conventions way back in the day for my dad. And I remember we had that book. It was really thick and it cost like 30, 35 bucks in hardback and no one wanted to buy it. And then dad goes, hey, tell people this is a Willis Wall William is a story of William Wallace from Braveheart. I was like, okay, we sold out that day. We sold out because everyone, know we, after Braveheart came out, everyone wanted that book. <laughs> and so we couldn't keep that book in stock at our, our, our show, show tables. 
because uh, we could, it was very it was one of the most expensive books we had on the table and it just sold out because and I read it too and I enjoyed it but everyone's like oh it's William Wallace says, yeah we, and Robert DeBruce and said oh I gotta have it you know because everyone loved Braveheart but Braveheart I gotta admit it's a good movie it should be number one hey folks what is your number one or what is your top five Mel Gibson movies? Let me know. There, like I said, there's a ton of Mel Gibson movies. Your top five may not even resemble my top five, but I'm pretty sure Braveheart should be in there. Maybe Maverick. I don't know. But let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for another Saturday Morning Simulflange.